this rogue, the role almost went to another actor. Now on three, all fire. Action. Okay, we don't have enough snakes to make the scene work. It was movie history in the making, with George Lucas as producer, Steven Spielberg as director, and Harrison Ford as the swashbuckling archaeologist, Indiana Jones. We had um, nothing but fun. While Indy lost out on The Lost Ark, Raiders did score five golden Oscars and spawned two successful sequels. Harrison's trademark leather jacket and fedora were even enshrined in the Smithsonian in 1989. But the then 39-year-old actor almost didn't get his hands on that whip. I just did Star Wars, and he was in Star Wars. Let's try to get a fresh face in here. George and I both wanted Tom Selleck. He actually came in and tested and did a wonderful test. So we went ahead and hired Tom, and then CBS stepped in and said, wait, we have a contract with Tom Selleck to do a movie, a TV series that hasn't aired yet called Magna P.I. To whom uh, I'm forever grateful. <laughs> Why are you here tonight? I need one of the pieces your father collected. Lucas actually dreamed up Raiders at the same time as Star Wars. Well, after Star Wars, I was on the beach with Steven, and he was talking to me about how he wanted to do a James Bond movie. And uh, George said, well, don't waste your time because I've got something better than that. And he said, this is better than Bond. It's called Raiders of the Lost Ark. So we had the title all worked out. The idea was inspired by old Saturday morning serials. But that's not the only reason George wanted to make the film, as he revealed during an interview on the set. I'm really doing it more than anything else so that I can enjoy it. Because I just want to see this movie. To write the film, Lucas and Spielberg hired an advertising executive named Lawrence Kasdan, who would go on to co-write two Star Wars sequels, as well as write and direct The Big Chill. We went off almost immediately to a house in the hills in, in Sherman Oaks to work out the story for Raiders. George essentially was the leader in that sense. It was his story, and he essentially guided the story through. Um, I provided a lot of the set pieces of the movie, the snakes, the rolling rock, and things like that that came out of my warped mind. And, uh, and before you knew it, we were in Tunisia making a picture. The first shot is going to be following our principal stuff. Africa was just one of four continents on which they shot, Stephen wanted to make full use of the unique setting. Big colorful fruit stand over here. Yeah. And maybe some other... Pl now, the thing of it is, he has to have room for that full whip. Tunisia also presented a variety of hardships, from the searing heat to the thousands of extras who didn't speak English. He has to serve all his friends. Yeah. But the toughest element proved to be the water. We all uh, finally became ill, except for S Stephen, of course, who arrived with a full case of SpaghettiOs and Gaffer taped his mouth every time he took a shower. Harrison's pain actually led to a classic Raiders moment. A master swordsman had been hired for this scene designed to showcase Indy's prowess with a whip. It was scheduled for two days of shooting and Harrison was like this. He just kept saying, I gotta get back to the hotel, I can't stand up. He was back and forth, back and forth from the loo to the set. At that point I was quite ill with dysentery, so I went up to Stephen uh, as soon as I arrived, and I said, uh, Stephen, why don't we just shoot this son of a bitch? And Stephen said, oh, my God, well, I was thinking that too. And so we did. It was not the only time Harrison helped punch up the story. Harrison is contributing so much to the writing of the script, to the story, to just the general feeling of the film. But he's one of the most inventive actors I've ever worked with. There's a very funny picture that they sent me of Stephen and Karen and Harrison all sitting at a typewriter on the set, you know. And that's how they handled it, really. Harrison also had no problem letting his actions speak louder than his words. Harrison was very tenacious about wanting to be seen on camera. Uh, as Indiana Jones, being a hero and being an action figure, not just being a guy, you know, in a close-up who takes the whip and goes like this. But Harrison's heroics nearly led to catastrophe in this sequence when his dangling legs interfered with the plane's flight. I'm not sure that uh, the story has been told. We're actually unable to, he was unable to use the rudder of the of the airplane to control the direction. And we took off and we crashed just around the corner. 
No one was hurt in the crash, but Harrison pressed his luck when he was dragged behind a truck. Have you ever done anything like this, dragging behind a car? I run, camera. No. Put your head up just a little if you can. That's it. Just uh, one more useless experience. Okay. I'm sure it's not dangerous. See, if it was dangerous, we would wait until we got more of the movie done. Toughest job I ever had. Actually, Harrison's tough job was far from over. And coming up on E.T., we are on the set as the actor faces some frightening co-star. On the set for one of Raiders' most infamous moments. I thought, hey, wouldn't it be cool if Indiana Jones, you know, is like in this room with 2,000 snakes? The secrets of Indy's amazing special effects. The models, the mine car chase, and an explosion 1,000 feet up. Steven Spielberg remembers the first time he met Kate Capshaw and the relationship that led them down the aisle. And we're catching up with Short Round, 16 years later. We always refer to Steven as the guy in the beer and the mustache. That's coming up.